Good afternoon. I'm Brian Bonner, Chief Editor of the Key Post. Welcome to Key Post Legal Topics. We have a hot one today, the ongoing saga of Ukraine's banking sector. As Swedish economist Anders Aslund said, the best way to rob a bank in Ukraine used to be to own a bank. And that was true, at least before 2014, when, believe it or not, you could actually open up a bank without disclosing to the regulator, the National Bank of Ukraine, who the beneficiary owner, who the true owner of the bank was. And so up popped a lot of banks, 180 in all, I think, at the, at the peak of the market. And they lent to friends, they lent to themselves, a lot of insider trading. Of course, it was just it, it would, would, to people with no intention of paying back. And so this Ponzi scheme or this orgy of insider lending uh, collapsed. And it collapsed about the time of the Euromaidan revolution, about the time it sent Viktor Yanukovych to uh, Russia in exile. So what's left is the cleanup. Estimates vary. It was well, the last I, it was 15 billion, 20 billion, 25 billion. But we do know, and we hope to get a, a, a better estimate today, we do know there are $15 billion in non performing loans uh, from the banking sector that we have today. And despite all the, the money lost to uh, taxpayers, there are still attempts to clean it up. And so with, with today's uh, experts. We hope to get an uh, update on where the situation stands now, how they're doing in recovering uh, taxpayer money, liquidating assets, and ensuring that this doesn't happen again to Ukrainian taxpayers in the Ukrainian banking sector. And just the effect alone of $15 billion in non-performing loans, that, for reference, it equals almost a third of the national budget for a year and it puts Ukraine among the highest nations in non-performing loans. A lot of those dated back to the Yanukovych era, even some dated before that. Uh, hopefully uh, not many are, are uh, since the reform happened after 2014. So, but we'll, we'll find out um, from our speakers. We invited the central bank governor, Kirill Shevchenko here. He sends his regrets. He suffered COVID, was out of the office for three weeks and just returned this week. Sergey Marchenko, the finance minister, who also plays a key role in the banking sector since half of the assets of the, of the banking sector are state-owned, including the top four banks. Um, uh, also had a scheduling conflict and couldn't make it. But we have a top flight group of experts here. And I think I'll start with Mr. Martin Nuke the senior partner of Morris Group Law Firm, because you're the one who decided that this is the issue that we should talk about today. And you've had some experience there, and actually a successful experience with a client in buying one of these distressed assets that, that used to be in a bank that collapsed. Um, take it away. Um, thank you, Brian. Thank, thank you for everybody coming here. And we really have really top level uh, speakers today. Um, why you, you have asked me today earlier, earlier before uh, why we decided to, to discuss once again this topic uh, okay. it's been discussed for uh, five uh, last years in ukraine uh, on different levels we have um, last year we have uh, mpl forum even organized in kiev uh, not every country uh, is organized is organizing something like that on, on that level and uh, the answer is very simple um, as I understand the situation and the, the, the uh, market situation, the NPL market, which was created after the uh, bank uh, insolvency uh, uh, wave starting 2015-16, um, it's a huge market, actually. And when we are talking about um, investment into Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian or uh, real investors going from abroad, um, we are talking about the, the, I think, couple of directions which I can see as a lawyer, as an attorney uh, here in Ukraine, which are really interesting for them. And uh, NPL, non-performing loans, are one of these uh, very important uh, uh, targets which investors are looking for. Um, 
since we do not have a uh, real investor sitting here uh, next to us, uh, I may play double roles as moderating you, Brian, and also uh, talking about some real cases which we have uh, lived together with our clients. Um, you know at least one of them. We were uh, discussing it last summer. And uh, also uh, why I think this topic is really important because we are, we, I mean the, the lawyers, the, the uh, businessmen, and also the investors which have created all uh, necessary infrastructure and which has uh, gathered some uh, assets already and which have accumulated some uh, amounts of their investments to invest into the NPLs in Ukraine. Uh, everybody are expecting the state-owned banks uh, which will be the uh, uh, next wave of the NPLs, which will create the, that next wave of NPLs on the market. Uh, as you told already, it is more than half of that 15 billions, and nobody knows, knows exactly what are the uh, amounts actually. And uh, that's why I'm really glad that uh, Olana has joined us today. And uh, we all have heard about the new regulations uh, from uh, April last year, mm -hmm. but still one year uh, has already passed, but we do not see uh, state-owned banks on the market. Uh, maybe we can address these questions today. Um, also, before you join our discussion, I uh, uh, have a short discussion with Olexi. Uh, we, um, I gave my, my card to, to, to him because we went, uh, I, I didn't knew Alexei before, and this is the best compliment for Prozoro. I'm on the market for many years. I know uh, DGF, we have uh, at the Morris Group company, we are working with DGF since 2015, and mm -hmm. uh, we have dealt with a lot of uh, insolvency banks, and we have uh, provided our services to uh, collect that debts. Uh, I know inside from a lot of um, really, uh, huge uh, uh, debt portfolios and, and, and debtors, uh, but uh, we never met uh, Alexei before, and this means that Prozora Systems, in my opinion, works very well. I knew, I know uh, some jokes which are very popular on the market, uh, been told by some people that you can influence Prozora, or you could influence Prozora. Uh, and we have uh, even had some discussions and okay, let's uh, take a bit. Uh, let's uh, just, let's find some kind of car. Which 100 ways to cheat Prozora. Yeah, Not so, possible. So, you, you know, it's, it's, it's there are some um, um, colleagues of mine that are uh, at least trying to, to sell somehow their, I think, fake relationship to, 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 yeah. to Prozora. And they say, okay, we can, uh, play this game. Uh, so you're telling me that your experience mm -hmm. is that this is now transparent, competitive, open. And it's not the only, and it's, so when we are talking about the um, sales procedure itself, yes, it is. Because it didn't used to be that way. Actually, the, the third way bankers stole, besides setting up the mm -hmm. bank, paying ridiculous interest rates, loaning to themselves, is a lot of them in the early days bought back their their failed assets mm -hmm. uh, at, a, at a discount with no transparency. We, we, we all remember, um, how to say properly, Raketa uh, issues uh, on, on the beginning of uh, sales. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. You remember that case when the uh, National Bank uh, was uh, starting to, to sell their own uh, NPLs. Uh, on the market, and there were some manipulations, I would say so. After the Prozoro sales were introduced, the procedure itself worked very good. We are not talking about the, uh, for example, uh, some kind of maybe uh, insiders, loan insiders are involved in the, uh, on the side of the buyer, yeah, mm -hmm. somehow affiliated with them. We are talking about the procedure itself. The procedure itself is working pretty good. And it's a good job for DGF and for Prozoro, for sure. And uh, what I would like to hear also today from maybe from uh, Olana that uh, what, are the, what are the plans for the state-owned bank? 
uh, uh, are they going to do like the, the, the same which DGF has done for the recent couple of years? Or maybe the procedure will be a little bit different. Okay. Um, yeah. It's good that we have Eliana Gordienko. She is the chairperson of the Supervisory Board of Ukra XM Bank, one of the largest banks in Ukraine, also state-owned bank, one of the big four state-owned banks. Uh, so we have a lot of questions. Um, I mean, I do know that I, I think the end the non-performing loans. And by the way, what is the definition of non-performing loans? If you haven't paid in 90 days, at least that's still the definition. That's 41 percent still apparently of all the loans made by Ukrainian banks. A huge figure. I see the goal is to get that down to 20 percent of the loan portfolio. Interesting to see how that's coming. And I don't know. Uh, Oh, yeah, you recently got to Ukra XM Bank, like within the last two years, but it used to be known as the President's Piggy Bank. And I don't know if it's still trying to collect on money that was lent uh, to the Kluyev brothers uh, during Yanukovych's time. And apparently they absconded with that and, and didn't pay back Ukra XM Bank. We had a lot of these kinds of loans and it's real money that the taxpayers ha have. But you're on the inside of the, the, the banking sector. Can you walk us through, and I know the state doesn't intend to, to be in the banking business forever. In fact, I think it's set 2025 or, or what year to get out of it. But walk us through uh, the situation as you see it now. Sure, thanks, Brian. And uh, well, that, that's true that uh, out of all the state owned banks, uh, the bank where I'm the chair of both the uh, supervisory board and the NPL committee of the supervisory board, which is, which is I think, relevant to the discussion. Uh, we have, I think, the biggest but the most concentrated corporate NPL where you would see every president, you know, the previous president behind sort of certain yeah, cases. From Riga. Yes. Uh, so um, we are lucky in that sense. Uh, we are also lucky that our top 20 NPLs are quite concentrated and everyone knows them. You just named a couple of them. I mean, it's quite public. Uh, regarding what you said about knowing the real numbers, there is a good news. Uh, you know, when the corporate governance reform started, that there was, you know, the disclosure and transparency is one of the main sort of things to achieve. And I think that the supervisory board was with the bank, uh, the independent supervisory board since uh, May 2019. So by now, I think the level of transparency and level of trust into the numbers, you know, on NPL as well, mm -hmm. but also the financials, uh, you know, condition of the bank and everything that you, you can trust them. Okay, so, you know, whatever you hear, whatever you read, that's like that's the true, truth. Yeah. that's true. Um, next step, you mentioned that there were um, sort of a legal developments and, you know, almost 50% here at the table are lawyers. So, uh, yes, uh, the developments, not only the, regu the regulation of the Cadmin last year, which is 281, but also uh, National Bank also issued certain regulations, which were all trying to inspire state-owned banks to start the sales. Because the number, uh, Brian, you have in your article, it's reducing already, but it's reducing at the expense of write-offs mostly and, you know, certain other things. And liquidation was never a problem. So, you know, the bank was doing liquidation, which is the third option in all the NPL cases. Um, well, however, liquidations, when they're done by the state-owned bank, which is not always very efficient and can mostly rely on the administrative resource, you know, in the mm -hmm. past, uh, that was like, a, you know, heaven for NPL borrowers because they knew the state owned bank would never liquidate them, would never take over the assets. So liquidation was a good option actually. So write off is a a bit, you know, worse for the NPL uh, you know, borrower uh, and for the bank actually, uh, you know, because the bank still need to collect, you know, writing off doesn't mean we stop fighting. Writing off means it comes from your reserves, right? Yes, And somebody, exactly. somebody pays. That. Well, who? Cool. Yeah, I mean, the, the state. state. Just, we we have a clear shareholder. Means, you know, uh, our which shareholder means is cool. The taxpayers, right? Exactly. Uh, so this third option, which I think we are all discussing here, are the sale of the right of claim, right? And that's what the state owned banks are not doing. And regardless of the regulation last year or national bank regulation, why we in the state owned bank are waiting and how long we will be waiting? I understand that's the question. 
uh, not um, we will not be waiting for another year uh, the sales will start shortly um, the problem uh, we were facing and fighting since we started is the reluctancy of people working in the bank to take the risk you know and the risk is obvious obviously you know everyone on the NPL side of the things investors you as advisors and everyone does you know say what's the problem you know just sell it uh, there is a problem which price to set how to persuade the prosecutor office when they come uh, they will come for sure I mean just the question how yeah, ready you on, are on the same day. Uh, well maybe <laughs> in a couple of years when the when the next presidents come uh, but uh, you know they will come right and they will ask why you, you decided to sell why you choose this price and when you start I'm, I'm not a ban banker I'm a lawyer so you know it's maybe easier for me that's you know to, to talk about it but uh, when they start asking questions you need to give them answers and you can't answer them saying that I'm a banker I have a professional discretion you need to trust me because you know that's not how the law enforcement in Ukraine works well I hope it will at some point but not now so what we were doing is to sort of um, educate people in the bank and to provide certain certainty to our management that first the supervisory board you know contains professionals who are ready to sort of share the risk um, not you know meaning that it's collective irresponsibility but meaning that you know to use your professional discretion and not to be afraid you know of questions which will come uh, you need to make sure that your files are properly prepared and you have clear explanation why you decided to sell why the price was this and as you mentioned uh, a lot of people want to buy but we also need to make sure that that's not you know the same borrower buying his you know sort of right of claim at a lower price which is the usual sort of a structure, legal structure in Ukraine with respect to NPLs. So I don't know, Alexei will mention uh, whether Prozoro helps with that and uh, Sveta will also share her experience. But, uh, you know, the whole sort of um, um, ground work is almost complete. We are still waiting for a couple of clarifications from the National Bank. Uh, we know Kirill is uh, sick, so we think that's the reason for the delay, hopefully. Uh, what we want the National Bank to help us with um, is to publish benchmarking so that when um, you know there will be questions in the future about the pricing about you know the uh, uh, timing of the sale or anything we can you know refer to some market practice which Svetlana with her team helpfully uh, created um, but we just need to make sure that it's a public information and we can reference to it um, and as soon as it's done you know the, sta the sales will uh, kick off uh, so, fingers crossed. Can, can, can I just back sure. up for non-lawyers who might be watching? Uh, and, and back at Ukraine Bank has not made any sales of distressed assets. What we sell, we sell the collateral. Okay. You know, when we enforce, when we go into the liquidation, we then we sell. Procedures. Yeah, but we you, sell. So you have done that. Yes, but that, those are assets. Right. What the sales, uh, um, you know, everyone is interested about is not to buy a building, uh, or which is. You know, if there is a building still, because all of our NPLs, they are legacy NPLs, they are historic. It's not like months, like you are writing your Where articles. Is it? How, how far back does it's it It's like come? more than 10 years. So there is no hope that something will happen. Okay, so those are the legacy NPLs and we need to, you know, we need to create a very good impression um, and we need people to believe that we will sell successfully to an independent investor, not to sort of a, someone backing up someone else uh, at a transparent process why we need that because hopefully even the threat of this sale to a proper investor activist investor someone who will be able to collect more effectively than a state-owned bank um, that would bring people to the table or at least that would take it out of our balance sheet so that's the plan the, okay yeah wasn't there a law I thought I was reading that was kind of a game changer that allowed uh, you know, to get around the prosecutor's end to, to allow the sale of the asset at whatever price it sold for, some well, Dutch rule. We, we, we should just ask Svetlana maybe because I just uh, recognized Svetlana has a smile on her face when she when she heard of a word responsibility from Olanas. <laughs> Okay. Everyone smiles when they hear, hear about so, responsibility. No, no, what can you do? Maybe the smile on, on Svetlana's face says a lot because they already did it. Maybe <laughs> you just now is the best time to, steps. to go, go to Svetlana recruit. Uh, I have. Uh, you are the managing director of the Deposit Guarantee Fund. This is a uh, huge job. I, I've interviewed your your predecessor. So far, we have to set up an interview, but at that time, the Ukraine had just 
uh, closed more than half of the banking sector. You were swimming in assets. People from Mikhailovsky Bank, which was which which was insolvent, yeah. were protesting outside the deposit guarantee fund. I'm sure you remember those days. Maybe you can tell us what the situation is now. What hope? How much has been recovered of this 15, 20, 25 billion that the taxpayers lost? What hope do we have of recovering anytime soon? And how much do you think is realistically possible? And on what timetable? I mean, so if you can walk us through, because in the early days, it was very messy, as you remember from 2014, but I'm sure you've refined it now. Thank you. Thank you for inviting and thank you for having a chance to talk about this topic because this is really very important and this is part of my of my life and this is part of all banking system life. And uh, while uh, Alana was describing all the issues they're facing now, I mean the issue of price, is the price right or wrong? The issue of prosecution people, and I can guarantee you for not for hundred, for thousand percent, they will definitely come and ask. While you are, while you are looking for the decision, who should be the buyers? This is all questions which we faced back to 2014, 2015, and we had to find an answer. And we found an answer. We found an answer given that I am today in front of you, not somewhere in the jail. That means that the answer exists. But you're not here. <laughs> Maybe you're I'm afraid here. to leave. We're happy about no, that. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in the hospital. This is not a jail. Uh, it's yet. safe. Uh, so, yes. So, the answer number one is the transparency of the process. And this is what Prozora helps. And answer one, number two is unification of the procedures so you are setting the one rule how you sell the asset and no matter what you have to follow it even despite you see that that you might have a little bit of more um, more price sell price or some tiny percent of more money better please follow the procedure that's the only thing which can protect you when the prosecution people come and the answer number three about the price, we, you know, we use many of, diff of different tools, the independent valuation, the professional, pro the professional judgment, nothing works properly. Always you've been, you will be asked why it is like that. The only answer which really exists, this is the ba balance sheet value. So if you have the price or value at the balance sheet of 1000 grivnas, but you know it costs like 10 grivnas, always start selling procedure from 1,000 grivnas. And you will be never asked why the price is that low. You can always answer, please, we introduced the market as much as possible. Nobody wants it. However, all this is possible only if, I'm stressing again, if the procedure is transparent. Back to 2016, Alexei will confirm the DGF was the organization who was uh, the, the who was the demander of uh, this platform and who helped to create it. And unfortunately, those people who have been doing that is not with us. They moved to Prozora, but that uh, that uh, that platform was created exactly for the Ukrainian reality and for challenges Ukraine faced. Uh, coming to DGF, uh, so far we have sold most of assets we own. You know that we have been uh, owning uh, around 20 billion in dollars of uh, assets. Most, like 90 percent of them, were in NPLs, and just a little part in the property and all others. So we sold. Uh, now at, the, at our balance sheet, we have less than, than um, less uh, than three billion dollars. That means kind of 80% is, is gone, right? And what another thing which is very important, and I keep stressing on that to all state-owned banks, that guys, don't lose the momentum. Now the NPL market exists. There is a capital there. If you do not provide a pipeline to, non to, the, to the market, the capital will go. 
it, it, it gone because the capital requires earnings. If there is not, the capital will go to other, uh, to other assets, to other subjects for investment. And given that DGF have so, has sold 80% of existing and those 20% which left, they are really very, very specific assets. I can admit that till the end of this year, and maybe even earlier, this market will vanish. It will disappear and the capital will left, will leave, sorry. And if uh, um, state-owned banks decide to, to go to the re to open market, uh, to NPL market, next year they will need to spend another six months or so to attract this capital back, to convince the players they are ready to provide with the supply. And the, if there is no supply, no pipeline, the capital will not come. come. Right, and only if there is a capital. Why I'm stressing on this on momentum that much? Because this is the competition. If there is one player, you will take uh, as as little as possible. If there are many players, you can you can provide you can create a competition, and you can really say put the head on the heart that this is the maximum possible price we could manage to 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 to, to rise from the market. Okay. I took notes. That's a good summary. I'm really struck by the fact that you guys are worried about prosecutor general. N not us, office, the management. The yeah. management of, I mean, anybody, because they're, they're Johnny on the spot on this, but when it comes to prosecuting bank fraud, uh, Brian zero. asks Svetlana how often she visits prosecution, a prosecutor's office. From, um, from different authorities, I would say. Not yeah. Good question. This is, this, is, this is a part of my daily routine. Yeah, that's a job description. So yeah. we've got, we are getting used to that. But you, you know how to explain you. So if you are doing the right things, you are doing the right no, thing. No, I know, I know. You don't of need course. to persuade me. That's not, uh, yeah. yeah but how, do absolutely, you, do you, absolutely. What? Of course, you should understand that the prosecution office will come anyway. Yes. But if you have a prepared answers, if, then if this yes, is... you can, yes, it might take you nervous, it might take your time, but it will never, uh, it will never finish with, uh, with uh, any, you know, uh, real uh, harm. When they come yeah. and, and talk to you daily, do you ever ask if they've ever thought about filing bank fraud charges against uh, oh, that's too complicated. Moisky, that's too complicated. Bakhmatuk, uh, you know, Lagoon of Delta Bank, Klimov of Imex. I mean, th this is 25 billion is real money, and it came from the taxpayers. And we haven't seen, uh, I don't know, of a single person convicted for bank fraud or embezzlement. Recently, this year, we have three, uh, well, managers of Privat Bank charged. But not, it's only charged, right? It's right. Not that. Only charged. Uh, I'll, we'll see if, if we'll get a first conviction, but very slow. Uh, uh, so, I mean, there's still a lot more to talk about, but I want to... Uh, it's interesting that uh, you are down to three billion. That's really quite good progress. Do you have an end date for when you want to liquidate? I mean, all of these... Yeah, assets? yeah, sure. We, yeah, still... still uh, most of you know we had 96 bank or so so we have liquidated already 60 of them so we have another like uh, 30 banks which are just on the paper in active liquidation there are only three banks now mm -hmm. so they are in active liquidation and we plan to finish this liquidations till the end of the year which means that till the end of the year our assets will be zero I mean, from old Ben. We'll start uh, earlier, new... Svetlana, don't worry. We'll Sorry, start may I interrupt? Like, what is the average coverage of uh, that uh, 17 billion? Recovery. Moment, recovery, yeah. recovery sounds, yeah. How, how much did you the recover? Average, yeah, yeah uh, the average coverage is now at uh, around 6-7%. Because if uh, so, we, we we managed to to receive around, um, uh, but the the ratio, the recovery ratio depends on the quality of asset and on the type of asset. Yeah. If it is real estate, then sometimes it is over hundred, right? If it is strongly distressed, like deeply distressed until it is even below one. But if you take uh, just very very easy mathematics math. Uh, how much assets we owned and how much proceeds we got is around seven percent, which is not the worst case given the uh, numbers of even Europe. Mm -hmm. 
which is not the but, worst but case. Now, now, now we are coming closer to the question of insiders, yeah, and, and this was uh, Olano race also. Then uh, I can um, remember your article uh, in Kiev Post, uh, and it was an interview with uh, Svetlana, I think, uh, two years ago. And one of the main points there was that uh, our main goal is to, to, to collect as much as possible and not to, uh, so to, to, to deal with who are the end buyers. Mm -hmm. so, and this is also the question because uh, it, it will be the very important question for the state-owned banks, this crucial question, I think. And um, I think to uh, put that on the table that uh, we are ready to, 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 to sell to everyone, we just need to, to sell it as fast as possible. And at, at the best price. But, but actually this regulation you were referring to from last spring, it doesn't allow to sell to related Yeah, parties. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, it so isn't, it, so it, it's, really, it's really, really tough to control, to control that. You know, you it's impossible to control. It's impossible, yeah. it's impossible to control. Yeah, it's, really yeah. it's unfortunate you have to, to, you not with you us have here to build a huge infrastructure to be able to, to control yeah. are they related or not. Uh -huh. so, and the, and the, the, the so you can't control whether it's... So it's, it's really difficult, yeah. you know. No, but, but Brian, you can't because, uh, you know, what is the related no. party definition? I'm sorry, I'll talk a bit like a lawyer, like, okay, like an ex-lawyer, because the only lawyer here is you, but... Uh, um, Related parties, you know, it's not only those who are related by relations of control, you know, a guy can hire someone to buy it for him or for his benefit, right? You know, and, and they are Which technically, actually, and technically they are not related, back, right? Yeah. But the, the, these, you know, I investors are acting in the interest of I hope, the same I people. hope legally a related party can be defined when the bank is issuing the loan. It can be. Uh, no, it, it's not it's about. Otherwise, we have more insider Yeah, but, but <laughs> Brian, I mean, we, uh, you know, it's if we talk selling, now, yeah. that's why I asked you before this panel. Are we talking about the legacy portfolio? Because one thing is legacy portfolio, and the way they were, you know, the lending was done back then when no UBOs issued they anything. Uh, they were not disclosed as with the bank. I mean, Ukraine in the past was all the same. It's not like you know, the banks uh, would open without disclosing UBOs, and the uh, loans from state banks were taking with disclosing you bills no i mean you know we have uh, the borrowers it's not these people whom you read in the press the borrowers are spvs you know and you can't get close to the real ubo right uh, behind wait, wait, the wait, case wait. spv As special purpose vehicle okay UBO, <laughs> you don't ultimate, the <laughs> sorry i, th I thought you were <laughs> talking like a lawyer ultimate beneficial okay, owner yeah yep. that i understand so I have a question for you. I mean, has, have you analyzed, has anybody, I guess it's for everybody, has anybody analyzed this non-performing uh, loan portfolio? When did most of these loans originate? Uh, what era? In our bank or in general? In general. Has anybody analyzed Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. surprise. NPLs are still coming uh, now. I mean, there are fresh NPLs, I but those are different are. NPLs. Yeah. You know, those are COVID-related NPLs or just, you know, normal, regular businesses. Just, uh, last, last legal talk here in, yeah. in, 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 the, in, in, uh, in front of that table was regarding the uh, green energy. And I think this feed up, feed up there. It's, and uh, as I know, the, the Ukrisin Bank as well as Ukrisin Bank, they have a lot of uh, loans. Right, uh, yeah, in, in but that, the, the loans go back all the time. That can, be, that can be real NPL, I mean not... Yeah, but the one, so yeah, but so there are sort of a current ongoing NPLs, which yeah. is a normal banking, and provided mm -hmm. they are not like 10 years or 15 years long, that's a normal banking operation, right? You, you should have NPL in your portfolio because COVID starts, you know, mm -hmm. green uh, tariffs change or something, you know, some industries go bankrupt, some businesses are just miscalculating or being over optimistic optimistic when they do their business planning and the banks for some reason believe them. So that's a normal business, I understand, in the banks, uh, I heard from bankers. Yeah, the, the uh, but, uh, yeah, but like what we talk about here is the legacy NPL, which is totally irrecoverable and which the state-owned bank needs to deal somehow because the state-owned bank otherwise needs to keep the reserves and keeping the reserves does not let the state on bank to lend to a uh, new so this business and up earn credit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. What how what is your definition of legacy NPLs? Is it more than ten years. More than ten years. Yeah, and, and where we don't know the ultimate beneficial owners. Well, well we, we know are, them, but where we don't know on legally, the papers. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it true that I mean, most or if not all of those will have to be written off, or is there really some value? No, the there investment? is. There, there is. is. Yeah. So like, uh, it, it is the same as as with DGF. 
Mm -hmm. So uh, the good news is that uh, right now the state-owned banks operate in an environment that was created by yeah. like DGF <coughs> and DAS and all this market. So we, uh, we, we've been through a lot and a lot of prosecutors to create the mm. system that is like uh, prosecutor proof or uh, that creates this kind of transparency and uh, you can actually sell or, or do something with those NPL. So what's the value there? Uh, the, the borrowers right now, they understand that there's not much uh, the state-owned bank can do with them. Like legally, they, they, you can follow them, but up to a certain extent. But then if you transfer the title for this loan and the collateral, uh, ho however unpaid it could be to the rival financial group, they will take after you like by different means that the state-owned bank can't use. And that's the value there. And once you have like two competing financial groups uh, on the auction, you get the recovery value. So for the, the problem is like with each year, the recovery value like decreases drastically. Uh, for, I don't know, uh, f for the first five years, it drops like 10 times. So another five years comes, it drops a you know, hundred times. So uh, we could have done this and start selling NPL so state and banks like two years ago easily because all the infrastructure was there but unfortunately we kind of missed the chance and that decreased the value i guess like the recovery value by half mm -hmm. since then but uh, we, we should start doing that now Silvana. yeah you, you had a portfolio of 20 billion now you're down to 3 billion if my arithmetic is correct does that mean 17 billion went back to the taxpayers or is there a figure for how much has been recovered from this I guess ongoing debacle with the banking industry. You know, uh, the price. I will tell you. I will tell you just a a, a, a very, very fast how the price is usually defined. Uh, the bias. I mean, market bias, and we do have the market bias now. Not not uh, related parties who try to to rebuy its loan, but they pay the highest price. I understand here is kind of moral hazard. Can we sell to the non, to the related party? But if a part of that, the highest price always pays the borrower himself or the related party of the borrower, exactly. because they do not price in the uh, ticket to the wall, right? The ticket to the wall, which we usually sell while we are selling to the market. When we are selling to the market, normally the price of sale is 50 percent of collateral market value as of the date i mean if there is a huge portfolio where there is only one loan which has a more or less collateral more or less um, valuable collateral the, the entire bulk will cost 50 percent of the price of collateral which means that other 50 percent the buyer price in for again for the wall the um, NPLs, which are highly unmarketed, uh, unmarketed NPLs, what do I mean by, by highly unmarketed? This, those which have been, the loans which have been introduced to the related parties 10 years back, they usually cost <coughs> kind of zero. <coughs> those which are more or less, uh, more or less competitive NPLs, there is always a competition and there is always the demand and there is always a battle but the price is always somewhere around this 50% of the collateral. This is how market prices now, and it is very clear. So Aliana can clearly calculate how much she will get out from her entails, given the benchmark which DGF has already provided. And honestly, I think that state-owned banks are more or less lucky here, given that they can now, uh, they can have a data and then can have a forecast of their proceeds based on real experience, right? real experience in DGF has been created. That's why I said thank you, and Svetlana. Sorry? That's why I said thank you for being oh, yeah. the first You're in welcome. setting up the practice. <laughs> yes. So did I answer the question or please you, specify? You did, but not? I'm just wondering if anybody somewhere is keeping track of how much went back to the state treasury because six to seven percent no but in a in a figure 40, 40 uh, so we have we yeah, have uh, we numbers. have uh, we have received around 40 billion grivnas out of this uh, 500 grivnas NPLs. Uh, how much in dollars so that's uh, so this is 
It's a billion and a half. Yeah. Something yeah. Like that. Okay. Yeah. That's something compared to twenty-five billion. Billion and a half. Figure. Yes. And all other, all, all the, the, the yes, or the, uh, the rest. We now working with former of shareholders in trying to 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 claim the damage and trying to withdraw the damage out of that. But this is a different story. No, I mean yeah. I know that the numbers are moving targets all the time. Yeah, yeah, that's Brian, why it's Brian, difficult. Yeah, Brian, but that that's I mean you need to give two numbers. You know the. It, it can sound confusing that, you know, there was like 20 billion and then you got 1 billion. I, I understand that's confusing. Almost but then you need also to calculate how much the state on banks lose or cannot land or, you know, how much the econ economy lose while the state on banks are waiting, you know, and not selling or, and getting whatever price, you know, even if the price is looks... Uh, you know, less than people think we could have gotten, you know. So mm -hmm. it's, I, I do agree with Sveta that it's uh, uh, also timing, that, yeah. time of, is of essence. It's, it's also very important to, to add maybe a little bit to what Svetlana said uh, and, and introduce another uh, number here. When we say about 20 million nominal value of that loans and we say about 1.5 billion of um, uh, re recovery value of what was, was marketed, we can find something in between, I think, um, very close to that uh, last last number, mm -hmm. which is the <coughs> market value of uh, collateral we have. So all that 20 billion nominal value, that doesn't mean that was 20 billion assets behind the loans. Fake loans yeah. There are a lot of loans which uh, were without collateral or that was just a fake. Mm -hmm. We've seen, well, for example, uh, like yeah, we, we, yeah. we've seen the, the, the loans which were um, uh, uh, received by the, by the we guess insider lenders with collateral like um, the rights which uh, the the future rights which will be received after the uh, potential film will be made somewhere in the United States yeah, and that rights we never, were I mean, assessed uh, as an asset where uh, well, you have the valuation of 60 million dollars yeah, like but, but that's so that's, that's what's in, in, in included into the definition of insider banking or lending because you know if no you know and if you are giving a true market value and you give a perfect collateral for your loan then you are not uh, you know you're not in that group you are in a different group you maybe you're just not the, the, lucky the stadium but, uh, case is very very Give it one here. Uh, yeah, case. but Brian, there is also another problem. I yeah. mean, I mean, I'm not saying that this uh, NPL historic people, some of them are good. I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm not making a comment on that. I'm just refraining. But um, it's also the legal system or the Ukrainian sort of a history because back when all of our NPLs, almost all of those NPLs originated, the law did not require an independent valuation for the collateral. So the banks were doing the valuation themselves. So back like 10 years ago, uh, well, you know, a guy would come and say, listen, you know, two news. First, I know the guy somewhere there and, you know, they will call you. And second news is that look at this nice building. I'm telling you the cost is billion and the bank would like, OK, you know, maybe two billions. OK, two billions. So that's how it was done. It's, it's not always the bad faith. It's not that people, you know, not all of them or maybe not necessarily people were taking money not to repay them. What they want, you know, what happened is that they really believed, and sometimes it was true. It just, you know, the value of the assets, you know, deteriorated because, you know, the real estate market in Ukraine is, you know, you know, works a bit differently than in other countries. So, um, you know, the value, uh, did, uh, you know, significantly decreased. Then the independent valuation started, and the banks were required to do the independent re uh, to reevaluate in with independent experts. And uh, what also happened is that, uh, you know, this inside the borrowers, it's not like they didn't want to pay back. They, they probably were counting to pay back at some point, but on a favorable terms, like when they want or when they have money to repay, right? So, and that's what, uh, you know, uh, that, that's the whole story. So it's not only like, uh, you know, people uh, were lying or, you know, stealing necessarily, but they were giving assets which significantly uh, lost the value. Um, and the banks back then were not able to use, you know, rely on independent valuation. They've done the valuation themselves or they trusted people. And, you know. I wanted to go back, I mean, for people who watch this discussion and say that this is interesting, but you, you brought the discussion to the cost to the nation. And I'm wondering if you can elaborate on that. I'm sure that's a, you know, the opportunity cost of, 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 
of having to write off these loans or not being able to sell the assets. Can you speak more to that? Because, I mean, credit is the fuel of most sure. economies, certainly the American one where I, I am from. But that's not happening. That's not, well, for, for many reasons, not only because of the NPLs, but uh, in, in our bank and, and we, you know, I hope made it public uh, that uh, the whole loss of the bank for like 2019, it's, it's a huge loss. I mean, people are upset, obviously, uh, but that's a historic loss, you know, because we need to make reserves for these historic NPLs. Uh, and when we come to the shareholder and tell them, you know, give us money to our capital, it's not because we don't want to work. It's because it will take us another couple of months uh, to, you know, move it and to recover uh, funding. We need to start actively, you know, sort of uh, land. And before, the, I mean, we can't, I mean, unfortunately, uh, you know, I, I love this job. And unfortunately, you can't tell the people, uh, the economy, wait, we need to deal with our NPLs. Now we can deal with it because, you know, all the regulations are in place and we can use the example of uh, DGF. Uh, but until we are sorting this out, we are not lending. I mean, it doesn't work this way. If we are not lending, then the you know bank shrinks, and you know we will not mm -hmm. come back to business, right? We need to uh, give our license to the national bank and become you know merge with DGF um, if we are dealing with the bad bank only. So we need to deal with the bad bank, which is huge in our bank, and we also need to lend. And to lend, we need sort of a it's it's not free money, but uh, you know we can't lend with reserved you know, uh, liquidity. So that's the, that's the problem. And that's why we know we need to start selling. Uh, we keep telling this to everyone within the bank. And I think everyone heard already many times. And that's exactly what the supervisory board and the NPL committee should be doing. We need to inspire them to start selling, which we're doing. Uh, but we also need a couple of regulations, as I mentioned, Svilani, I'll just finish. And, um, and finally, you know, most of them are done, obviously, you know, to be completely honest, everyone hoped uh, and at some points donors only IFIs also believed that there will be some sort of a law giving the state on banks, the supervisory boards and the management some sort of a lifelong indemnity. Protection. You know, just, just, yeah, just, you know, resolve the situation and there will be no questions asked. That's too good to be true. Yeah. That, that's uh, even if it's <laughs> even if there is a law which says that, and there is a draft law we discussed with Alexei on a different panel in the parliament, you know, providing for this indemnity. But even if the parliament for some reason would pass it, which I don't believe, that that's that's not going to be working in Ukraine. Well, uh, yeah. at least I think it will not work. Um, so you just need to yeah prepare well, rely on the practice, on the benchmarking, uh, and uh, you just, just do it. Thanks, Svetlana. You were going to jump in? There was an idea one year ago, two years ago, to, to, to have a DJ as a, as yes. a, as a your sales manager. Mm -hmm. you should, yeah, I think you should remember. This, is the, remember. this was created, the idea was born specifically, specifically to, to give you a relief from the responsibility. And we understand very well that uh, every, uh, every person which comes to the chair and the every person which needs to sign the decision of sale for sale it always will be the case of um, kind of fear and everything djf is crazy enough not to be scared, not to be scared of any everything of anything given that we have sold for 20 billion of dollars already right and this idea of using djf as a salesman right. as, as an infrastructure as yeah. an infrastructure passing us all your um, and uh, entails DGF sells and returns you the money for the little fee. I think this idea can 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 solve yeah. and can boost yeah. the entails uh, of state-owned banks. But uh, unfortunately, if there is no p will, a political will of state-owned banks to push this idea, I am afraid that it will never uh, be uh, realized. Right, but. I mean, the alternative option exists. One option is for, for, for state-owned banks to, to sell, sell according to procedures yeah. and be sure that, yes, you will be followed by prosecutors, but your procedures are transparent and you, at the end of the day, you will be fine. Another option, which I don't believe in, the law you just said, DGF was trying to get this uh, preferential many, many times <laughs> and we always failed. 
So do not rely on this law. We don't. Our third option was to transfer all, the, all those NPLs to DGF and DGF will do it for you. Yeah. There is so, also a fourth option. Uh, there was also a discussion and you would clearly remember that. There was a discussion between the NBU and the Ministry of Finance at some point when Markarova was there to create a bad bank, you know, uh, another sort of uh, option. Yeah, why do you one. need another bad bank when you have DGF yeah. as a bad uh, bank? DGF, so. bad bank. Uh, so what, what, can what I, competitive yeah, I can advantage answer, you will get from the, from the other bank? No, no, I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not saying that that option is better. What I'm saying is that uh, it was considered, and I know that my predecessor, Stephen, you know, sort of uh, met many times with you and you have had uh, discussions and we also discussed this way IFIs. The position is that um, it's like, you know, Svetlana is kindly offering like, don't be afraid, give it to me, I'll handle it for you. Uh, I mean, I think the donor's uh, preference is that the supervisory boards they created should work as well and should yeah, take some Yeah, IFIs risk. were against yeah. that. So, um, is, and we, uh, it's not, uh, you, again, Svet, it's, it's not, you need, don't need to persuade me. I'm a lawyer with a background. When I was joining the supervisory board and applying, I, I clearly understood most of the risks and I, willingly decided to take them on so it's not uh, it's not that the supervisory board is uh, being sort of afraid uh, or something. Uh, no, we it's need not to about do it. I yeah. want to sell you and no, Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. Not. I this, know. Is a, this is additional responsibility. <laughs> yeah, right? I know, we I are know. now talking more about in, in terms of all countries. Right? Yes, yes, I we understand. have a problem. Yeah. There is NPLs. At the same time, there is an infrastructure. There is a tool how to sell without responsibility for uh, those people who are who but are it's caring. A question of at which price I'm giving them to yeah, you as yeah. well. So, um, yeah, that's it's, why it's, it's less not about the, yeah, that, but that's just a more high level discussion in terms of uh, impact for the country, possible, yeah. Right. Well, well, we're down to 10 minutes. And I think, as uh, you know, one of the questions I had, I mean, we still have banks going insolvent. Mr. Bank of Odessa was a more recent one this year. I think people want to know, I mean, and I remember in the beginning, there was some very funny business with, I mean, a bank would be declared a problem by the NBU and then not a problem. And then there'd be an administrator and then a curator, and then it would be declared insolvent. Then it would go to you for liquidation. In all those steps, and I probably didn't get the sequence right, they had cleaned out the bank, <laughs> the owners of everything no, that was not nailed down. Uh, so. And maybe I'm not up to speed, but for a long time in the banking industry, creditors' bill of rights was was a huge topic, and uh, because people would not, you know, it was very difficult to collect on some bad loans. Uh, so I, I guess that's a long way of saying: Can this happen again, or, or have we put in enough regulations and safeguards that we're, the worst is behind? Can I answer? Please. Okay. Um, <laughs> As, as the ba new banker, uh, um, or as the practicing banker, um, Brian, regulations do not help. Yeah, I mean, the pra how you implement them, you know, and how you uh, sort of assess your borrowers, I mean, and how you follow the market, uh, you know, when COVID started, uh, we needed to proactively approach our clients to make sure they do not turn into NPLs, you know, and, and offer them you know, restructuring terms and something. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's not about regulation. Regulations are uh, good, let's put it this way, or it's much better than it used to be, right? I mean, legislation develops, uh, you know, practice develops, uh, etc. You know, we implement all this uh, draconian, you know, sort of a compliance and uh, Finmon sometimes even over, uh, I think, implement. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's life. So fine. Uh, sometimes it's it's really difficult to pass, you know, compliance and Finmon tests, uh, even, you know, when you are meaning good, right? Um, sometimes it's uh, over protection, but um, the the way how you implement it uh, proactively and how you interpret certain regulations, that's the, I think, the, the key to success. Um, and yes, you you know, bankers need to make sure that uh, the level of the NPLs do not sort of exceed certain targets and, and they all know the targets and uh, bankers should do their job. And then there is a hope. I, yeah, I, uh, I could add. So we have an example of recent Arcada uh, bankruptcy, right? 
So Svetlana could correct me on that, but uh, the time between Arcada uh, failing and the first assets went for sale was like six months or, or smaller. Yeah. That, that's, that's first, because the infrastructure is there, the procedures are there, so they just follow the procedures that are kind of foolproof or prosecutor proof, whatever. The second thing is that right now DGF has power to cancel the contracts two years before the liquidation time. So basically, if you didn't install the money two years before the liquidation, then basically a a every contract could be void. So that solves your question where, where people were stealing money during the process of liquidation. I take it this is a post-2014 reform. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. And, and the third one, uh, the third thing that we didn't discuss uh, here, but I guess it influences the market a lot. And that this thing that uh, Ukraxim recently used is that the bankruptcy procedure and the asset sales uh, during the bankruptcy procedure where uh, you sell the collateral or the collateral is going uh, bankrupt is also done through Prozor sales, through transplant auctions. And uh, uh, so Ukraxim used that uh, just last year, end of the year, and it got like lots of money for that. Uh, several times over the estimated prices because there was competition, etc. So it means that there is no arbitrage anymore. So people were arbitraging between, you know, failing the bank, going bankrupt, and then maybe uh, in years uh, battling with DGF and collecting uh, and, and repaying something or going bankrupt uh, and collecting uh, their assets back through uh, through the bankruptcy procedures that they, they could control through fake uh, creditors, etc. Right now they can't control the banking, uh, the, uh, the bankruptcy procedure. So that means that either way uh, you sell the asset, you get the market price. Mm -hmm. And that also helps the uh, state-owned banks, I guess, to recover more now uh, compared to like mm -hmm. 2016 probably. Improvements. Maybe the best way to end this is with a real life example. Chernomorit Stadium, which you had a client who was, who bought it. And I don't know, there's a lot of complications, so I don't know if you consider this a good news story, cautionary story, or a bad news story. Because a lot of people, I think he was the only bidder, and he had to, to bid 10, 20 times. Uh, for an increasingly lower price, and a lot of people just wouldn't touch it at all. So this story actually, as, a, uh, as an example, it, uh, it's an example for everything we just discussed today. <laughs> because starting, so started, starting from the, uh, the position that uh, if you are starting uh, bidding process from the nominal value, you will not face uh, prosecution. Uh, not, <laughs> it's not a case. You will still face some uh, some uh, uh, potential trouble. So this the story is really interesting. Um, this uh, asset was uh, as a collateral for the uh, insider loan um, value more than five billion grivnes. And on the end, after 20 auctions, if I'm not mistaken, Svetlana may correct me, uh, something like that, more than 20 auctions, it was sold for about uh, 300 uh, million greenness. So we have the market value uh, of the asset, actually. On, on the beginning, it was 5 billion greenness. Uh, um, after this uh, auction, uh, a lot of things happened. So there were different investigations, there were arrests, and this is also very important and crucial issue for the state-owned banks. Uh, if state um, dealing with, I, I mean, uh, selling the assets through the DGF or uh, within the state-owned banks, it doesn't matter for the investors. They are buying something for the state on the public auction, and everybody was allowed to go to the auction and to, to, to participate and to buy the asset. And if the state has decided to do so, they have to protect the investors and they have to protect the, uh, the result of the auction. Uh, and uh, after this, so when we're talking about this case, uh, everything began, uh, as, you, as you may remember, uh, everything happened. So we have uh, armor arrests, we have uh, different uh, mm -hmm. uh, litigation processes. Uh, on the end, uh, with uh, um, help of a lot of 
people and with uh, bringing this story to publicity and to making a, a good uh, PR and GR campaign, uh, it hopefully uh, ended uh, good for the buyer, for the investor. No buyer's remorse. <laughs> Sorry? And the buyer doesn't uh, so regret. They, 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 they are, uh, I don't know <laughs> if okay. they regret economically, but uh, at least they have the title and they, they have, they have the, the, the physical control long, over, long over the asset and they are using it uh, right now. Uh, so, so not so long lasting story, but it's very, uh, so it's a good showcase just to, to, to see how it works. So you will, you will face everything, even if you start from the nominal value, you have to be ready for that. But and you still, have to have good what lawyers, is, yes. Yeah, but still, what is, what is really very important... They will never go out of business. Yeah, sure, but, but <laughs> what, what is exactly. still very, 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 very important in, in, in this situation that, uh, uh, what Svetlana also mentioned, that the infra infrastructure is here, the capital is here, all the investors are here. Um, they are really, they are waiting. So it's, it doesn't... Uh, uh, so the investors can invest, for example, into the privatization, which is al already ongoing in Ukraine. And the, the money here, the people are here, they are, they believed somehow in Ukraine and they are ready to, to invest further. And we have also breaking news today that this process will, is, is going to start some days this year. It uh, will start. And it, it's really good news. For the state owned banks. For the state owned banks, yeah. We're out of time, but last word for anybody who cares to speak. Stay tuned, we'll start selling. Yeah, it starts out. Svetlana, anything from you remotely? Good luck. Yes. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get top dollar. Let's, take a let's, look let's finish at positive, at positive note. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, share one from our yeah. experience as well. Oh, I did have one question I wanted to ask because there was talk about making a public register of non performing loans issued at least by the state owned banks. So that the taxpayers would know who was the beneficiary, how much. Did that ever happen, or is that still considered so, banking secrecy? No, we list every, every three months, and, and the uh, list who of took it? yes, and our website. And this is one of requirement from IMF okay. in the memorandum. No, no, but that's for DJ, yes. no, not for us. Yeah, but not for the state-owned banks. It's yes. a banking secrecy. Unfortunately. But from other side, Alana, from other side, if there is a court trial, there is no more bank secrecy. And uh, Sveta, everyone knows the... our NPL borrowers. I mean, it's bank secrecy is I that mean, yeah, I can't yeah. tell you. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of articles uh, and it's very public. Lawmakers who took out $800 million in loans. And yes, but unfortunately, that's a case where banking secrecy is... Yes. It should unveil at some point. It should unveil at some point. You know, like guys, IBS, you know guys, but from the other side, if everyone knows the names of the borrowers and everything, why you do not push the banking society to to, to help you? Yeah, not well, This is what we, we tried to do many years ago. When the, If there is a, a distressed borrower, please unite with the banking society and stop serving the borrower. Right? So you make we do this as well, uh, Sveta. We recently um, discussed that with the IFIs and other states on banks. Uh, we, we, we are on that. Thank it's you. A very, it's a very good point. Yeah, so you should put him, you should put him on shame. I he mean, he should be he a black, be refused um, yeah, listed uh, from the banks. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's, you know, it seems like logically, if the taxpayers are, are paying for the bailout, they should know who they're bailing out. Yeah, it's not so. only that, Brian. What Sveta is talking is that not only knowing, but also sort of other commercial banks uh, blacklist. should blacklist. Exactly. Yeah. Be, uh, how close are we to a credit rating system? Because if I go into well, the American... What is, what, is the English, what is the English word of boycott? Um, boycott. Blacklist. Boycott. Blacklist. Yeah, boycott. Blacklist. blacklist. I mean, yeah. actually, they, don't, they look at me as a number, my credit rating. That's it. And if my credit rating... That's a different, enough, it's a different topic. Up. We are ready to be invited. Okay. Mm -hmm. Different topic, so, so we're going to end. Yes, I, we I, found another topic to meet. Yes. We found many other topics. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to ask uh, Ukra XM Bank and Alana Gordienko if she, she will sponsor a key post legal talks on why prosecutors do what they yes. do. As soon as we and get uh, recovery from NPLs, we can sponsor uh, any interesting okay. discussion. Yes. All right. We'll wait for that day to happen. But we're going to... Bring this uh, to a close, Key Post Legal Talks. It's been very, very interesting for me. I hope it has been for you. And uh, I think you can see we chose the right speakers here.
So have a good day. Watch us. Uh, well, watch the Keep Post for the next Keep Post Legal Talks. This memorable historic discussion will be on the Keep Post YouTube uh, page for posterity. So thank you and, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.